If only Thanos could snap his fingers and wipe out these bloody games. Welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Marvel games. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're taking a look at some of the most terrible video games using our favourite Marvel superheroes. Yes, they're even worse than Deadpool without a mouth. Number 10, Spider-Man. Try to get up there in time, Spider-Man! <laughs> Watch me cut my web, goblin! Watch yourself fall, Silk Slinger! Don't stop up. There were so many terrible games released on the Atari 2600. Along with E.T., Spider-Man is one of the most notorious. The game isn't anything too complicated, just climb a building and avoid obstacles. Sounds easy, right? Well, not if every little thing is constantly knocking you down. To make matters worse, the game demands pixel-perfect precision. Also, why wouldn't Spider-Man just climb up the wall instead of webbing his way up? Come on. Number 9, Thor God of Thunder. Doesn't matter. They'll suffer for this all the same. Yeah, we knew it wouldn't be long before we see a movie tie-in game on the list. And spoiler alert, it isn't gonna be the last. Despite releasing around the same time as the first Thor movie in the MCU, Thor God of Thunder was simply not worthy of wielding the mighty Mjolnir. The game displays some of the most boring combat we've seen, lacking any oomph to our hits as well as being visually dull. Mix that in with an assortment of glitches and repetitive gameplay, and God of Thunder will prove disappointing to any fan of Thor. You think you are the only one who desires justice? Number 8, X-Men Destiny. You've got it. Don't forget to breathe. This was about as big of a mess as X-Men Origins Wolverine. X-Men Destiny was on a path to become one of 2011's greatest titles, giving players the ability to create their own hero and fight alongside their favorite mutants in a narrative where your decisions impact the world. Instead, it became one of 2011's biggest disappointments. The game provided templates for players rather than intricate customization, totally undercutting the main selling point of the game. As for the combat, well, we hope you like button mashing because that's all there is. Oh, and the story that supposedly affects your decisions, it's brutally bad and your actions are basically meaningless. Well, it looks like there's another storm coming, as bad as what we just faced. Maybe worse. Number 7, Silver Surfer. A few goes at this will make you never take a health bar for granted again. Silver Surfer is one of the most unnecessarily demanding games you can ever play. Every level is a literal guessing game of what can and can't kill you. A couple of bullets is understandable, but even the walls are a hazard. Basically, this is a game for those who want to experience paranoia. The music may be great, but that's not enough to make us slog through the many game overs we've endured. Number 6, The Incredible Hulk. Poor Hulk hasn't had a great outing in the world of video games since 2005's Ultimate Destruction, but the worst of them has to be the 2008 movie tie-in game. The graphics are truly awful and almost hard to look at, but the real problem is in the extremely repetitive combat. Smashing stuff is fun and all, but the game falls into a routine of punching the bad guys, trash the place, roar and repeat. There's no satisfaction in causing the destruction, and the game does nothing to capitalize on Hulk's ungodly strength. Overall, it's a game that exists solely because of the movie. Number 5, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. I can't. 
again. If the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie didn't disappoint you enough, then its tie-in game certainly will. The graphics aren't as dreadful as the other games on this list, but it's not enough to compensate for the other noticeable flaws. In addition to the unsettling character models, the writing and voice acting is about as cringy and campy as Batman in the 60s, and we don't mean that in a good way. And I've done some good, put away a lot of bad guys, but I haven't found the man who killed Uncle Ben. What's so disappointing about this was that its predecessor was actually a solid game, especially for a movie tie-in. With this, you can almost tell things were just cobbled together. Giant lizard a while back, or that dude with all the, the, the robots. So, <laughs> as long as he's out there killing, the gang war goes on? And it gets worse! Number 4, The Punisher No Mercy For a character as badass and fully loaded as The Punisher, you'd think making an awesome video game would be a shoe in Well, it's been a mixed bag for the guy, but the absolute worst was The Punisher No Mercy. The game was an absolutely boring experience from the insanely short single player mode to the lackluster and laggy as hell online mode. The visual presentation was about as lifeless as the Punisher's many victims, and it failed to do anything special to distinguish itself from other first person shooters. As you might expect, fans could not find any reason to stick around. God is gonna see this Number 3, Fantastic Four. For a long time, superhero games were nothing more than a standard beat em up starring your favourite characters. Fantastic Four was one of them, and it was the absolute worst of the bunch. While you can choose between five playable characters, you're not going to get any enjoyment no matter who you choose. Pulling off moves takes way too freaking long, and the environments are so lifeless with reused assets. Needless to say, Fantastic Four is miles away from being fantastic, and considering the time it was released in, the same year as Final Fantasy VII and Crash Bandicoot 2, it was one of the worst games in 1997. Number 2, Iron Man. The systems. The Incredible Hulk wasn't the only superhero movie to get a horrible game. Even Iron Man fell victim to the curse, and it was somehow worse than our green friend. Coupled with bad voice acting and appalling visuals, Iron Man is so easy and tedious that even those looking for a power fantasy will fall asleep from boredom. Every fight is easily conquered with a laser beam and a couple of missiles. You really don't have to be all that accurate to hit your targets, making each level a breeze. You'll be done before you know it, and you'll most likely forget this even existed. Before we reveal our top pick, here's some dishonorable mentions. Number 1, The Uncanny X-Men When you think of the X-Men, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Wolverine's sharp claws? Cyclops' heated laser beams? Storm's vicious weather powers? Well, the developers of The Uncanny X-Men imagined a top-down shooter. Yeah, we don't get that either. Even by NES standards, the graphics are abysmal, making it hard to discern where you can go. As for the multiple playable characters, you're selecting no more than an alternate color palette as every character plays almost completely identical to each other. Crikey. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.